Good evening. Tonight we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. Please rise for our opening song, The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came. This is the last uh, Sunday in the season of Advent. We have our four candles lit, denoting that Christmas is near. And uh, in this last Sunday, uh, the person that is most highlighted, of course, is the Blessed Virgin Mary. So let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the grace and peace of God our Father and the love of the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And with your spirit. And as we prepare ourselves now, we ask God's mercy and forgiveness for our failings. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the long-awaited Messiah and Redeemer. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you came to love us and to teach us how to love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go do whatever you have in mind 
for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you, and when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. of the Lord I will sing forever through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness for you have said my kindness is established forever in heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages and now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ be glory forever and ever amen the word of the Lord
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Back in 1987, a journalist by the name of uh, um, Mara Rossi did a story uh, on uh, Ann Donahue. Ann was a Georgetown University graduate who had volunteered uh, to work at Covenant House, I think. Most of you have heard of Covenant House in New York City that's there for the purpose of um, providing shelters for homeless runaways, many of whom have been forced by um, you know, hunger and lack of means to turn to street walking and even pro prostitution. And every night at 10 o'clock, Anne and another volunteer would put gallons of hot chocolate and bags of sandwiches into this Covenant House van. And for the next couple of hours, oh, the van with the dove painted on the side would tour the city and the areas known for these young people to hang out. And the volunteers simply offer free sandwiches, hot chocolate, uh, something to keep them warm and fed. And what do they hope to accomplish by these nightly excursions? Well, Anne's answer back then was, uh, we're out there because there uh, we know that a lot of kids 
don't know about Covenant House itself. About two-thirds have n never even heard of us. So part of it was spreading the word that there was a place to go for help. But she goes on to say that they accomplish something else too. They, they show uh, these kids that somebody cares for them, that somebody is out there who is not interested in buying or selling them, but simply helping them. In referring to her first year as a volunteer, Anne says, that at first I was very depressed. You know, what kind of God would let kids suffer so much? And finally, it dawned on me that God is not coming down to show them his love. But God has sent us to let his love work through us. And just as the Father worked through Jesus during his life on earth, so Jesus taught us to let our Father work through us in our life. We are to be channels of God's grace and God's love to those around us. And so, after a while, this is what Anne felt she was doing. She would drive her van <coughs> with the dove on its door through these seedy areas of New York City. She was serving as a channel of God's grace to a lot of needy young people. And basically, if we look at the scriptures today, isn't that what Mary did in the gospel? She said yes to God's invitation to be a vehicle of his love in today's world. We sometimes forget that if Jesus is to be born again in our world, it must be through us. <coughs> Christmas is uh, traditionally a, a children's feast, you know, and it's a good time to introduce young children uh, to the Christmas story, to the event at Bethlehem, to the great mystery that Jesus is born the very Son of God is born to us. But we can't stop there with the story. Because if we only tell our children that, we've only told them half of the Christmas story. We must go a step further and teach them that Jesus brought God's love to us to teach us that we must bring God's love to others. Several years ago, the Washington Post did a story on a Texas millionaire, uh, someone who was not always wealthy, I mean, from birth. He came from a poor family, and during the Depression years, he remembers his father and mother in Texarkana, Texas, uh, who had to struggle to make ends meet, as most Depression families had to do. <coughs> Excuse me. And he recalled that during these difficult years, that a lot of hobos would ride the trains uh, uh, through Texarkana. And a lot of those hobos would come to their home for meals. And his mother, and never turned them away. Although she sometimes wondered <clears throat> why so many of them came to her house. And then one day she learned the reason that one of the hobos told her that the curb in front of their home was marked 
with a special code that's known only to hobos that indicated that the people in that home would feed you. And when the mother was asked, should the mark be erased, she said, no, leave it there. And commenting on his mother's answer, the man told the journalist, we are all what we were taught to be. You sit in that little house in Texarkana and you see your parents doing things like that when you are a child. It's the greatest lesson in the world. It's that simple lesson again that we must bring God's love to others just as Jesus and Mary brought God's love to us. It's the lesson that we must learn and relearn each Advent and pass on to our children and grandchildren. That other people give to us at Christmas so that we in turn might learn to give to others. Unless we learn this lesson and pass it on to our children, we've missed a big part of the story of Christmas. Let us now offer our petitions and prayers to Almighty God. That the message of Christmas may inspire all people to see the futility of violence and seek lasting peace. We especially remember the people in areas of conflict we pray to the Lord that those who gathered here in these latter days of Advent will find this to be a time of holy preparation to receive God anew into our hearts and minds. We pray to the Lord for those affected by the flash flooding and landslides in the Philippines. We pray to the Lord. For those who are presently fighting the virus and for those who suffer from depression or loneliness during this pandemic, that they may not lose hope, we pray to the Lord. For those departed from this life, may the Lord embrace them with his love and may they rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, hear these prayers and the prayers of our own heart. And help us always to live the lesson of this season. Help us to somehow be vehicles of your grace and givers of your love. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord.
with your people, Lord. Send us your saving word, Jesus Christ, light of gladness. Come among us sacrifice may be acceptable and pleasing to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice in your hand, to the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good and the good of all his church. church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through the Lord Jesus. For by the oracles of the prophets, we longed for him. The Virgin Mother desired his coming with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when at last he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we join in the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the morning dew, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Jesus, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may be chosen to share in eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray now the words that Jesus has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. is the Lamb of God, Jesus who became one of us. Happy are we who share at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only...
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a, a couple of uh, announcements here. Um, the, we will have confessions at a couple of times this week yet for those that still want to receive that sacrament. Uh, the liturgical ministers' schedules are available on the table over here near the exit. Um, on Christmas, if you're coming to Mass, uh, we will have uh, on the table over there too, uh, uh, we have about 65 copies of a book called I Heard God Laugh. And it's really by Matthew Kelly. I think we've shared a couple of books by him before. They're pretty easy to read, and it's a simple book on uh, how to establish, uh, you know, a prayer in our life as part of our daily routine. So those will be available for, for you if you would use them. Uh, we have had a couple of people... A couple of families who have changed their plans for, had signed up for Christmas Eve and then wanted to change for a different time uh, or had to cancel. Uh, so there are a few openings for Christmas Eve. If you tried and couldn't get in, there might be an opening. If anybody has a change of plans who has signed up, please let us know because you know, there might be people that would love to come if there's room. So if, um, if you uh, signed up and then found out people from out of town can't come or are not coming, um, please let us know. And there are still some openings for the Mass at uh, 9 o'clock on Christmas Day. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to